Good morning, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We warmly welcome everyone to our worship service today. We pray God continual blessing upon each one of you and your families. We ask that you remember our sick and shedden members, persons who are in need of prayer during this time. We also remember the, the family of Deborah Rain, who passed away. We ask that you pray. This is a good friend of Miss Karen Pinder. And when we spoke to Karen, she asked that we remember that family in prayer. Um, many of you would know her as Debbie Rain. Um, we just ask that you pray for the family during this time of their bereavement. And for all families who are in their time and in their hour of bereavement as well, I pray for my wife's family, the Reckleys, Green Turtle Key. My wife aunt died last week, and so we remember the community of Green Turtle Key as well. We also remember Miss Linda Sands, who is recovering some, from surgery. So we ask that you continue to pray for her during this time. I would invite all of us to contact persons, call them, find out how they are doing, pray for them if they come to your remembrance at some point. And this has been a very trying and tough year for many families. And we ask that you remember all families who have lost loved ones and who are in their time of bereavement. We would like to thank those persons who would have assisted with the flowers and if anyone is interested in donating flowers during the month of September, we ask that you contact Sister Ann Lever. Uh, her number is in the bulletin as well as Marsha Cates. Applications are being accepted for the book scholarship for all college level students. Interested person can still contact Ms. Kim Sawyer or Mr. Percy Sands. And now we here to celebrate those persons who are adding an additional year to their life. And so we remember those persons who have been Younger, just a little bit longer. We remember them and we sing happy birthday to them. They're listed in, their, in your bulletin. But one person or a few persons in particular I want to make mention of, somebody is celebrating their birthday on the 23rd. And he is sharing the pulpit with me. And so he has been younger, longer. And so he looks good. He's excited. And so we celebrate that time with him. Linda Pritchard, Tyler Flower, Pauline Humes, Alexandria Johnson, Kenesha McPhee, Laureen Philpott, Gabriella Archer, Toshina Thomas, and all who celebrate their birthday this week. This seems to be a very full month of birthdays and so we celebrate with them. And so we ask that you join us in singing happy birthday to all of those persons who have celebrated for us already. And I invite you to join me. Open your bulletins as we participate in the call to worship. Please stand. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He set my feet on the rock and gave me the blood of the He put a new song in my mouth 
A hymn of praise to our God. Some trust in horses and chariots, but our trust is in the name of the Lord. And please, we join our voices in singing 427 through all the changing scenes of life.
Let us pray. There's a, special, there's a place where Jesus is waiting. There's a place that is wonderfully fair, for it glows with the light of God's presence. It's the beautiful garden of prayer. Loving and most merciful Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege and opportunity to enter into your presence and seek you in prayer. As we do so this morning, we come through the name that is of, above every name, the name of Jesus, who is our great high priest. He invites us to come to his throne of grace so that we can find his grace and mercy, especially in this time of need. Lord, as we seek your face this morning, we begin with hearts and voices of praise and thanksgiving. Indeed, Lord, you're worthy and deserving of our praise, for you are the source of all that is good. Thank you for your daily provision of all that we need for life and living. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. We thank you also that your hand of protection has been with us over the days of this week. Keep us, Lord, under your canopy of protection. This morning, we come of those from our fellowship and those known to us who need the special healing and renewing ministry of your spirit in their lives. May they know the touch of the Master's hand in body, mind, and spirit as they wait upon the Lord. May their strength be renewed. We remember those who are grieving today, especially Sister Ruth Cash's family. Lord, it's never easy to lose a loved one, and so we pray for your comfort and solace to be given to them as they grieve. Embrace and uphold them in your compassionate arms. May they feel the nearness of the God of all comfort. Your word tells us, weeping may endure for a season, but joy comes in the morning. May the joy of the Lord be their strength, even in the midst of sorrow and sadness. We pray, O oh gracious God, for your special grace upon the doctors, nurses, and all the healthcare persons who are serving in this time of COVID. Many of them made the ultimate sacrifice as they ministered to the sick and suffering. Some are in hospital this morning, fighting for their lives. Help us all, Lord, to do our part in following the protocols and getting protected so that this deadly virus can be held in check. Be with those in the education of our children as they prepare for the opening of the new school year. Watch over and protect all the teachers, students, and staff members as they seek to teach and train our children and youth in this ever-changing time. Continue now to be with, uh, to be with and minister to us in this service of worship this morning. May our hearts be ministered to and encouraged as your servant shares your word with us. May our hearts be open to hear and our spirits quick to respond and may your name be given glory, praise and honor. In Christ's name I pray, amen. amen.
we continue our worship during this time of preparing our hearts to present our morning offering, we will sing hymn 475. We will stand and sing in the last verse, I need thee every hour. Give you, give you not only our finances, but all we are, all we have, and all we hold. We open our lives to you for the service of your kingdom. Please work through our offering today, our lives this coming week, and lead us to follow you, Christ, in all that we do and say. Amen. Just one further announcement I'd like to make. 
Uh, as you know, you've been noticing in your bulletin um, previously that the Adventist uh, Ensemble will be with us next Sunday morning. Uh, they normally come and do a summer uh, service with us. Unfortunately, last year they were not able to be here. Uh, they will be with us next Sunday, and they're preparing for that, so hopefully all of you can be here and invite uh, your friends or whatever to be with us uh, for that service next Sunday morning. They will be doing the ma uh, majority of the service. We will have a short opening, and then we will turn the service over to them for, with, for their music. So uh, we look forward to seeing you next Sunday for that event. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. We now continue our worship with our scripture readings, which will be done by Mr. Vincent Knowles and Mrs. Juanita Knowles, which will be followed by a piano solo by Mr. Calvin Parker. Good morning. I'm reading the first lesson for this morning, and it's taken from the Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 to 7, and I'm reading from the NIV V version of the Bible. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all of his attendants. And he cried out, Have anyone leave, have everyone leave my presence? So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it's it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will not be plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Thanks be for the word of the Lord. The second scripture reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 30, reading from the New International Version. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, 
because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers, and those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Thanks be to God for the reading of his holy word.
Amen. Thank you. We would like to thank everyone who participated in this morning service. Thank you to Sister Morris for her prayer. Thank you to Miss Morgan Martin for her offertory prayer. To Vincent and Juanita Knowles, thank you for reading the scripture lessons. To our piano soloist, Mr. Calvin Parker, thank you for helping us to remember God's faithfulness. To our musicians, to our audio and visual technicians, we thank you all and our ushers. And to the congregants, we thank you for coming out and worshiping with us. And as we prepare ourselves for this morning's service to find out if we are truly more like Joseph, we will sing our hymn of faith, oft in danger and in woe. And during this time, I know that the protocol says that we can't socialize and gather after service. And so during the singing, you can turn your head, you can smile with your eyes, you can wave at your neighbor. No political signs, though. <laughs> Let's worship God in truth. And as we sing our hymn of faith, often danger, often woe. Hymn number 488. reflecting that tomorrow makes 29 years since Hurricane Andrew hit particularly North Eleuthera and uh, the actually the night before I celebrated my birthday but the birthday was on the Sunday I celebrated my 50th birthday so tomorrow I celebrate the 29th anniversary of my 50th birthday. <laughs> and I know people like to ask how old you are, so you can do the math, whatever. Anyway, it's, it's good to be here this morning. It's good to be alive for this long, right? And as I look around, at one time when I came to church, most of the people were older than me. This morning, more of them are younger than me. Uh, although there are a few still 
a little bit older than me, right? Um, now this morning we want to um, look at the life of Joseph and um, examine ourselves and see how we can empathize or how we can associate ourselves with um, Joseph, with the attributes that he had, with the, uh, the difficulties that he went through. And the verse we want to use as our um, text, if we like, is the um, 28th verse of Romans chapter 8, which says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Now, first of all, we want to look at, um, shall we say, Joseph's beginning. Joseph was born to um, Jacob, to Jacob's favorite wife, Rachel. And we know that Rachel went quite a while before um, she had Joseph. And then when she had Joseph, she named him Joseph. And the reason she named him, she said, may God add another child. In other words, increase her. He was one, um, she was looking to have other children. Now, how many of us have been a favorite child? Um, I know one thing most of us don't like the favorite child, right? Because they're favored above us. I was a favorite for about two years because I was the first child and it was two years before my sister came. So some of us have had that privilege for a brief time, but we know that um, Joseph was favored by Jacob and Jacob should have known better because he ran into trouble with his own family, right? His daddy favored Esau and his mother favored him. And that led into all kinds of mischief and deceit. And it caused no end of trouble in the family so that Jacob had to go and run away. But nevertheless, um, and we know that Jacob made a coat of many colors uh, for Joseph. And back in that day, that was a very nice thing. But I don't know if you remember some years back, uh, country singer Dolly Parton sang a song about her coat of many colors, but her friends made fun of her because it was just a patchwork um, coat and it was not um, worth very much. But apparently Joseph's coat was good. I saw a cartoon. I didn't quite agree with it. Um, Joseph is saying to Jacob, so what? I'm colorblind, so I can't see any difference. And the other one said, um, a different cartoon, oh boy, a coat of many colors. It will go with my pants of many colors, whatever. Anyway, so we know Joseph's daddy um, favored him among the other children. Now. The next thing we know about Joseph is that he was a tattletale. Most of us don't like people who tell tales, but he told tales on his brothers. Of course, his brothers were doing things that were wrong, and so he reported it to his daddy. But of course, that didn't put him any good with his brothers. And then, to make matters worse, he had dreams. How many of us dream? I have about four dreams every night. <laughs> I think I dream more than Joseph ever dreamed in his life. Um, but sometimes I remember some of them and sometimes I don't. And it's just as good I don't remember all of them. But, but anyway, but Joseph was a dreamer. And now I, in looking up Joseph, um, 
I don't think most of us realize that Joseph was not only a prophet in Christian and Jewish um, literature and uh, ancestry, but he was also a major prophet in the Quran, which is the, the Muslim um, Bible, if you like. And actually, someone said, but as I read it, he has a whole chapter is given to Yusuf, and he is held in very high esteem, even in the Muslim church. <clears throat> now, in the section I was reading about his dreaming, which um, they have written in the Quran that he told the dreams to his daddy, and his daddy said, don't tell your brothers because they'll dislike you even more. But we know that's not the story in the Bible. In the Bible, we're told that he told um, the story of his dreams, his two dreams, one about his sheaves standing up and his brothers' sheaves bowing down, and then about the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars all bowing down to him. And it sounds rather bigoty, I guess we would say, but he was uh, only revealing what he had dreamed, and I think they all understood what that dream meant. So his brothers, because of his dreams, his brothers hated him. Now, it's rough um, to have your own family um, hate you, actually. We're not talking dislike you, we're talking hate. And you know, we read that they were so jealous they planned actually to kill him. They said, we, we need to get rid of him. Um, but in the Bible version, we're told that um, Reuben said, don't let's kill him. Let's um, just put him in this pit. And we know Reuben figured he'd come back and take him back to his daddy. But in the meantime, he was sold um, and and some of the commentaries I was reading, they tried to say he was sold and resold a few times before he finally came to Potiphar and Egypt. So he was sold as a slave and he ended up in Potiphar's house. And according to the, the Bible, he was 17 when he ended up down in Egypt. Now, when he gets into Potiphar's house, things get even worse. Because if we look in um, Genesis chapter 39 and verse 6, 39 and verse 6, it reads, Now Joseph was well built and handsome. Now, very few of us can claim that, right? <laughs> or I should say only a few of us can claim that. Uh, he was handsome and very good looking. And <laughs> most of us don't think that that's a bad trait, right? But that can get you into a whole lot of trouble. To be incredibly attractive to the opposite sex can lead you into all kinds of difficulty. Now, I remember a song back a little while by Mac Davis, I think it was in the 80s, which sang, Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. Can't wait to look in the mirror. I get better looking each day. Some people say, um, um, I forgot the word, but I don't even know what that means unless it has something to do with the way that I look in my skin-tight blue jeans. So we know that um, Joseph was extremely good-looking, and I was actually in the Koran, it gives a whole lot of story about his encounter with a Potiphar's wife, and um, actually it says that he was in love with her as well, and that after Potiphar died, he married her. Of course, we're giving you just 
This is all from other sources. We don't accept it, but I find it interesting that, you know, you get other uh, different things that are written. And as a matter of fact, one of the stories said that um, Potiphar's wife's friends, her lady friends, uh, mocked her and made fun of her because she had fallen in love with a slave. And so she had Joseph come out and walk among them while they were peeling apples. And they got so distracted, so overcome by his good looks that they ended up cutting themselves. <laughs> and, um, and then, um, so, but in any case, we know that Joseph was tempted, but he overcame the temptation that, um, came, but then he was lied on. Um, um, Potiphar's wife um, said that he tried to attack her. And again, from other sources, it was written in Joseph trying to clear his good name. They, they asked the question, now where was Joseph's coat torn? We're told in the Bible she grabbed his coat and they said if the coat was torn from the front then Potiphar's wife was telling the truth but if it was torn from the back it would indicate that he was running away and he was telling the truth but nevertheless um, jo Joseph was then thrown into prison and, um, and then again things kept going downhill. Now, again, Joe, once he goes in prison, he's not known anymore now for dreaming dreams, but for interpreting dreams. And we know that he met there in the prison the butler and the baker from Pharaoh. And the butler and the, and the baker um, dreamed dreams, and in dreaming their dreams, um, they became very disturbed. And we notice from Joseph all through, and especially here, that he was somebody who cared about other people because he noticed that um, the butler and the baker were disturbed and they told him the dreams and we know that um, it turned out well for the butler. He was restored but the baker had um, his life taken, he was hanged. And then um, the last thing we want to look at is when finally Joseph's brothers come to buy corn, we know the whole drama. Uh, as we said, um, Joseph seemed to be very good at drama and even when um, they came and they bought and finally he um, showed himself to them as to who he was. They were terrified. But, we, but Joseph said, don't be upset. You know, this, um, what you did, you're not to blame for because God ordered it. Even though you did evil, God worked it for good. Because if you hadn't done it, many lives would have been lost. Uh, this was done so that you could um, all be saved, you and all of your family. And the last thing I want to note, that he was willing to forgive his brothers. And again, mentioning that I noticed when reading the story, he was a crybaby. I think I read six times that he wept. Even Jesus, we're only told about two or three times that Jesus cried, but Joseph was constantly crying. But that could mean that you have very strong feelings and very strong emotions. And Joseph was willing to forgive his brothers, even though we don't even read that they said they were sorry, they were petrified. 
they were sorry, I guess, to be caught out. But it shows we can forgive others. They don't have to come and apologize to us. We forgive them. But they, I think, have to um, repent or apologize in order to be forgiven. And so um, I'd like to leave you with that thought. We can look at the um, life of Joseph. It's a good example to follow. But we have an even better example, the example of Jesus, who was willing um, not only as Joseph, his brothers wanted to kill him, but Jesus' brothers, the Jews, did eventually kill him by turning him over to the um, Roman or the Gentile authorities. But he did it all for us. And I would like to challenge any of us who have not made that commitment to serve him, to come to the foot of the cross and to recognize the sacrifice that he made for us and to invite him into our hearts and into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, may this message um, be pondered on and may, as we leave from here and we go out into um, the world, we go to show others, those of us who are Christian, we go to show them that we are Christ's followers and that in all things we seek to do his will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we prepare for our benediction, I ask that you all stand as we repeat our mission statement. I'd like to thank Pastor Brother Earl Pinder for reminding us that many of us, we are somewhat like Joseph. We are caring, we are forgiving, and some of us, we too show our emotions. So let us repeat our mission statement. To worship, offer Christ, promote growth, serve others. I just want to announce, this isn't to do with church, but I have quite a heap of avocados in the back of my car. There's enough for everybody to get one. I know church isn't for selling, it's for giving away. But anyway, uh, we picked them because we're going to be going away the end of the week. And you're welcome if you like them to stop and get one. Let us pray. And now may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with each of us and all those we love, both now and forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 476, From Trials Unexempted, Thy Dearest Children Are. Mm -hmm.